welcome back to the Scooping Report. Today, before I get started, I wanted to point out uh, a couple things. Uh, a couple videos back, I did I did a video called uh, Big, Bigfoot and the Nose Bleeding. And uh, it, I was chatting with a, a lady named Mary uh, Fabian. Mary Fabian. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Mary. Um, from the Pennsylvania Bigfoot Project. And she pointed out that infrasound can cause a lot of those things. Um, nausea, headache... Um, dizziness and uh, she even uh, knows someone who had such a violent nosebleed they had to go to the hospital he said and but they have on the in the Pennsylvania Bigfoot project page on Facebook if you want to look them up they have a whole section of files and all kinds of cool stuff good information there if you want to learn more about it um, just check them out it's the Pennsylvania Bigfoot project and her name was Mary Fabian and I just wanted to send a shout out to her and thank her for that. And uh, so today's um, Bigfoot encounter was, I was I came across this one. And I told my dad I'd do one for him because he's from New Brunswick, Canada. And I wanted to do this for him. And so I found this report and it's a pretty interesting one. Um, the guy's name is Steve and he's from the Ottawa area. He says, during the summer of 1998, uh, either July or August, he said, I set out on a solo vacation from the Ottawa area to travel the eastern provinces of Canada. I first visited a friend in Red Banks, New Brunswick, where I left my car in my trailer, and the next day I got on my motorcycle and I headed to Kushibuguak Provincial Park on the recommendation from a friend, and I had to look that up, Kushibuguak. That's how they pronounce it. I, I was way off on my guess, guess for that, too. Um, he said the next morning I got up early. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I decided I would uh, like to take advantage of what trails the park had to offer. And he says that I, I picked a bog, and this was the largest bog I had ever seen. It's something like one and a half kilometers by uh, 0.75 kilometers. And... A kilometer is, is about a little more than half of a mile, if I, if I remember correctly. So um, so this was probably something like a, a, a mile by a half a mile, something like that. But a kilometer is a little more than half a mile, I do know that. Um, he said, you walk along a short trail through the forest and then, wow, you are presented with this incredible bog. Um, he goes on, I climbed the small viewing tower located at the start of the bog and took, took in the spectacular view. I remember saying to myself, let's see what animals I can spot. And then seeing something and saying to myself, there's one. And I pride myself in having excellent vision. And I focused as best I could on this animal. And it was directly in front of me at an estimated distance of about 500 feet. It was grayish brown in color from head to toe, and it was walking away from me. Uh, I never once thought that it was a man or anything, as its coloring was too close to its surroundings and too uniform. The only problem I had was that it was walking upright on two feet. I watched it until it was out of my sight, and uh, I was desperate to get an identification on this thing. Once I couldn't see it anymore, I descended the tower, and I walked along the boardwalk down through the bog in the same direction as the creature. Now, at the end of the boardwalk, I thought about going into the bog to look for it, but the fear of the unknown caused me to turn back, and it would me too. Before leaving the bog, I went back up in the tower, though, and it was exactly where I saw it the first time. And there it was again, except this time... It walked right across my field of vision from right to left. It was close enough that I could see light between its legs as it walked and noticed its lower legs and its arms were m much larger than humans, much longer and bulkier. It appeared to be picking things up as it walked. Uh, it didn't need to really bend over or stoop down as it picked up uh, something from the plants. I'm, I'm thinking it was picking berries. I watched it for about 20 minutes and it seemed like it, it was it seemed like I was looking at a shadow. I felt like it 
knew that I didn't have either my binoculars or a camera to get a closer look at it, and that it was just out of my visual reach, uh, too much so to make a definite identification. I just had this feeling. And during my vacation, I walked a lot of trails, and on two occasions, I walked off the trail into the bush, and I noticed a light from deep in the bush as if there was an opening. And sure enough, I found what appeared to be a natural road or a trail about 20 feet wide. And as far as I could see, either way, um, being in these openings felt strange. So I would turn back and continue on the main trail. At one opening, I noticed an impression in the ground that appeared to be in the shape of a footprint. Although it wasn't clear if it was a foot or not, uh, it seemed to be, it was odd, it was about an inch deep, sort of like an impression, like a rock would uh, leave if you pick a rock out of the dirt. Um, well, it, it feels good to get this off my chest and um, tell more people about it, and uh, I really don't talk about it that much for fear of ridicule. And, um, a follow-up investigation was done, and an investigator spoke with Steve, and um, he had this to add. Steve said it, it was uh, mentioned that it would have been obvious to the animal that a human was present and observing it, especially when he was up in the observation tower about 500 feet away. Uh, when Steve first went up to the observation tower, the animal walked out of view. Then, after Steve walked along the boardwalk at ground level for a while, and it returned, and then returned to the tower, the animal had returned to the part of the bog where Steve first saw it. Uh, this is when the long observation occurred. As the animal calmly walked around, picking things up from the plants in the bog, uh, Steve said the animal knew he was there in the tower, and it's just a feeling he got. And the tower only has a, a guardrail, a high barrier around it, um, about up to the waist high. And Steve was wearing a black motorcycle jacket and jeans. He wasn't camouflaged or concealed up in any way. Um, the animal went about its business without paying much attention to Steve at all. And Steve's sense was that it, it left his view initially not because it was frightened of him, but rather because it didn't want to cause a fear reaction in Steve. When it saw that Steve wasn't going to react with fear, it wasn't bothered. And so it just kept on about its business. This was just Steve's feeling at the time, uh, which he still stands by, and, and it is entirely possible. Um... Uh, uh, regarding the grazing activity, the animal didn't reach down to the ground, but rather to the low approximation of about a, a foot and a half high off the ground where the plants were flowering and there were berries in the bog. It didn't bend over, but rather it bent at its knees slightly and then reached over and just grabbed whatever it, it wanted to grab, uh, which was unclear, but just assuming, thinking it was berries. Steve now believes it was most likely grabbing um, yeah, the berries and the flowers on the plants, and as like it was snacking. And uh, there's some unusual natural vegetation in this bog as well, including uh, Venus flytraps, which are interesting little, uh, little plants. This sighting is fairly important for a few reasons. Um, one, it occurred in daylight, and the animal was feeding out in the open for an extended period even after it knew that it was being watched by a human. Um, it occurred in a remote Canadian national park uh, where there has never been any hunting, but in an area developed for nature visitors instead. The park likely gets very few visitors each year. Uh, Steve said he was there at the height of the summer and his motorcycle was the only vehicle in the parking lot. Um, there's an observation tower that can be used for camera work or for anyone who wants to return there to get photos and video. And disclosing this specific location and encouraging public to follow up doesn't create much risk for these animals because of the strict enforcement against hunting in this region. Uh, merely entering the park with a, a long gun would lead someone straight to a Canadian prison. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, Canada's pretty strict on their gun, gun laws. Um, and then it's probably a good thing that place was that area was never haunted, and it probably made made the Bigfoot feel, you know, more at ease and just more apt to just walking around comfortably and 
not really paying too much attention to humans, especially if they were up in some kind of tower. They knew they weren't going to be shot at. And so that's interesting. Well, I want to thank you all again for checking out the Skookum Report. And um, don't forget about, uh, to check out Pennsylvania Bigfoot Project. Uh, and that's Mary Fabian's page. I, I believe she's an administrator there. Um, that's a really cool place to get a lot of good information. And um, if you or anybody you know has, has had an encounter or a sighting and you want to share it with us and have it on the channel here, just shoot me an email at skookumreport at gmail.com. That's skookumreport at gmail.com. And I'll be sure to get it up on the channel for you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And leave a comment and let us know what you think. Um, if you have any ideas or any, anything you want to share with us. We would greatly appreciate it. And I want to thank you all one more time for coming to the Skookum Report. And we'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.